the CRT. The very first commercial televisions of the late 1930s through the post-war boom of the 1950s were all powered by cathode ray tube, otherwise known as CRTs. RCA introduced one of the first widely available models in 1839 at the New York World's Fair, and for decades afterward, CRTs were the default. They defined not just living rooms, but broadcast culture itself. Everything from the moon landing to I Love Lucy came through a CRT. CRTs worked by firing electron beams onto phosphorescent glass, lighting up tiny dots that formed images. It sounds complicated, but to most families, it was just the big box in the living room. The design was bulky, so heavy you risked throwing out your back if you moved it. Families treated these TVs like furniture. Some even had decorative cabinets built around them, making the TV the hearth of the house. Still, CRTs had surprisingly crisp images for the time, with deep blacks and rich color that gamers and retro fans still swear by today. You might remember the curved glass screen, the static shock when you got too close, and that thump sound when you turned it on. And if you ever lost signal, cue the snowstorm of static that somehow managed to be both terrifying and hypnotic. Here's the kicker. Despite their clunky looks, CRTs were incredibly reliable. Many lasted decades, far longer than today's smart TVs. In fact, some old CRTs still power on today, making them beloved among vintage collectors. But their size was their downfall. Once flat panels showed up, the days of the living room behemoth were numbered. CRTs weren't just the start of TV. They set the gold standard for picture quality that some argue we still haven't truly beaten. Projection TVs Projection televisions emerged in the 1970s when manufacturers realized people wanted theater-sized experiences at home. Early versions were mostly used in schools and auditoriums, but by the 1980s and 90s, home models became popular. Companies like RCA and Sony sold them as luxury items for families who wanted to turn their basement into a mini theater. Projection TVs used three separate CRT projectors, red, green, blue, that projected images onto a mirror, which then reflected onto the front screen. The result? A massive picture that looked like a movie theater in your living room. The trade-off? You had to sit directly in front of them. Move a little off-center and the picture washed out like an old Polaroid. Brightness wasn't their strong suit either. You basically had to dim the lights like you were setting up for a date night just to see the screen clearly. And then there was the size of the cabinet itself. Projection TVs were huge, deep, boxy things that hogged half the wall. Families arranged couches around them like altars. Moving one? Forget about it. You'd need a whole squad and maybe a chiropractor on speed dial. But the size? Unmatched. If you were the house on the block with the projection TV, people wanted to come over for the Super Bowl or the new VHS release. It wasn't just about watching, it was about hosting. Projection TVs taught us the thrill of big screen viewing at home, even if it meant squinting at a washed out image half the time. Plasma TVs Plasma TVs hit the market in the late 1990s, with Fujitsu and Pioneer leading the charge. For the first time, consumers could buy screens larger than 40 inches that weren't the size of a washing machine. By the early 2000s, Plasma was the TV of choice for high-end home theaters. Plasma screens used tiny gas-filled cells that lit up when electricity ran through them, producing vibrant colors and rich contrast. For many, Plasma was the dream TV. The picture looked cinematic, blacks were deep, and colors popped in a way CRTs couldn't match. They also had wide viewing angles, so you didn't have to fight for the good seat anymore. Suddenly, family night didn't mean someone was stuck on the floor craning their neck. The downside? 
burn-in. If you paused a DVD too long or left a video game HUD up for hours, you'd see ghost images burned into the screen. And they weren't cheap. The first plasma screens cost as much as a small car. Owning one was almost a flex, like having a luxury watch you hung on your wall. Still, plasma TVs changed living rooms. For the first time, a TV wasn't a bulky piece of furniture. It was sleek, wall-mounted art. Walking into a home with one felt like stepping into the future. Even the buzzing sound some models made became part of the charm. Plasma screens were the first TVs that actually looked cool even when they were turned off. LCD Liquid Crystal Display Although LCD tech was invented in the 1960s for calculators and watches, it didn't become mainstream for televisions until the early 2000s. By 2007, LCDs outsold plasmas, marking the first major consumer shift away from gas-based displays. Instead of glowing phosphors or plasma gas, these screens used liquid crystals that twisted to block or let through backlight. The big draw? They were thin, light and more energy efficient than plasma. That meant manufacturers could crank out bigger screens at lower prices, making them the middle class TV of choice. But it wasn't all perfect. Early LCDs had motion blur. You'd watch a fast chase scene and the characters looked like ghosts trailing themselves. Blacks also look more like dark grays, making night scenes look a little washed out. And if you viewed it from the side, color sometimes shifted like a weird tie-dye effect. Still, the affordability and practicality made LCDs the TV of the 2000s. If you walked into any big box store back then, the wall of LCDs was blinding. This was also the era when flat screens became normal. College dorms, small apartments, even kitchens started having their own LCD TVs. LCDs weren't flawless, but they democratized flat screens. Suddenly, a big TV wasn't a luxury. It was standard. LED, light emitting diode. Technically, LED TVs are still LCDs, but with an LED backlight. Samsung popularized the term in the late 2000s, and by 2010, LEDs were outselling older LCDs with fluorescent lighting. Why did it matter? LEDs were smaller, more efficient, and allowed for thinner screens. Some models even had local dimming, where parts of the screen could dim independently, giving better contrast. To the average buyer, LED TV just sounded cooler, and the energy savings didn't hurt either. Plus, this was the era when screens started pushing into ultra-slim territory. Suddenly, a 50-inch screen could hang on your wall like a painting. And this was also when TV sizes got ridiculous. People went from bragging about 32 inches to needing 70 inch monsters for their living room walls. Electronic stores turned into bragging arenas with rows of LED screens looping the same high def footage of waterfalls or soccer games. The result? LED cemented the death of plasma and kept LCD tech alive long enough to dominate an entire decade. LED TVs prove that sometimes it's not about reinventing the wheel, it's about lighting it better. 3D TVs The 3D TV craze kicked off in 2010 after the release of James Cameron's Avatar convinced everyone that the future of movies was three-dimensional. Nearly every major TV manufacturer, Sony, Panasonic, Samsung, rolled out models with 3D support. These TVs used active or passive glasses to show two slightly different images to each eye, creating a 3D effect. Problem? Nobody actually wanted to wear clunky glasses at family movie night. They were uncomfortable, easy to lose, and made you look like a rejected extra from The Matrix. Content was also limited, and regular shows looked awkward when converted into fake 3D. Gamers got a short thrill out of it, but the novelty wore off fast. Imagine trying to play Mario Kart with glasses slipping off your face. Within a few years, manufacturers quietly stopped promoting them. 3D TVs remind us that not every 
next big thing in tech is meant to last. Sometimes it's just a gimmick with great PR. OLED, Organic Light Emitting Diode. OLED technology was first developed in the late 1980s by Kodak, but it didn't hit consumer televisions until LG launched the first large-scale OLED TV in 2013. This was the moment flat screens finally reached their promised potential. Unlike LCD or LED, OLED didn't use a backlight. Each pixel emits its own light, which means true blacks. Pixels can literally turn off. The picture quality? Stunning. Infinite contrast, incredible colors, and thinness that borders on surreal. Gamers, movie buffs, and anyone who loves tech still swear by OLED as the best picture you can buy. But perfection comes with a price. OLEDs are expensive, and early models still had the dreaded burn-in problem. Watching sports scores or news tickers could leave ghost images if left too long. Still, the hype matched reality. For the first time, TVs could hang on walls thinner than a smartphone. Some models even curved slightly, like futuristic art installations. And every time you turned one on, the picture felt like looking through a window into another world. OLED is the TV that finally lived up to decades of hype. It's like having a movie theater screen in your house without compromise. QLED, Quantum Dot LED. Samsung introduced the first QLED TV in 2017, pushing quantum dot technology as the next step in flat panel evolution. Unlike OLED, QLED is still an LCD at its core, but it uses a quantum dot filter to improve color and brightness. QLEDs shine in brightness, making them perfect for living rooms with tons of natural light. They're also more resistant to burn-in than OLED, which is why sports fans and casual viewers love them. And now, we're seeing hybrids like mini-LEDs, micro-LEDs, and even rollable OLED screens that disappear into furniture. Some TVs double as digital art displays, blending into walls when turned off. Others promise holographic effects or screens that bend and fold. The future isn't just about how TVs look turned on, it's about what they can do when they're off. Imagine your TV rolling down into a soundbar or doubling as a massive interactive display. The possibilities sound more like sci-fi every year. QLED and its cousins prove the screen wars aren't over. They've just moved into a new era of pushing the limits of color, light, and design.